So, oh, Mr. Diamond, my question to you is, I saw the letter to your shareholders that you addressed in this issue in more detail. Uh, they've talked about it this morning, but can you please elaborate to everyone watching who may not have had the chance to read your letter? I spoke in the letter about social, social Democrats. Social Democrats is a market economy which has a good safety net, which is a good objective for all of society to have a good safety net. We have here. We can always improve it. I acknowledge that people have been left behind and that we need a properly regulated free market capitalism system. But socialism, if you mean by socialism, the government owns the companies and controls them. That will inevitably lead to corruption. Okay, those decisions that will be made, not what's efficient, not what people want, what gets produced, where it gets produced, who produces it, where people work, how they, how they work, will all become driven by political actors for furthering their own interest. And if you don't believe it, take a tour around the world and look at some of these true socialist countries. Well, thank you for that. And without objection, Madam Chair, I'd like to enter that portion of Mr. Diamond's letter to the shareholders for the record. Without objection, such is the order. Thank you. An idea was brought up during the hearing last month with previous Wells Fargo CEO that the bank should be financially liable if there is an oil spill at a project they help finance. I have been a car dealer for almost 50 years, and I've helped countless people secure financing uh, for vehicles. I think if the auto lenders were held financially liable for, car, for a car accidents, for example, I would have a much harder time selling cars. So, Mr. Moynihan, what would happen to the lending market if financial institutions were liable whenever something goes wrong, even if it's completely beyond their control, whether that be a car accident or an oil spill? I think Mr. Representative Williams, I think that the cost would go way up or the availability would go way down or both. Be hard to do business. Yeah. Uh, one of the beautiful things about capitalism is that all of, all of us and all of you are competing for customers like me and others. The institutions represented here today are some of the largest banks in the United States as we know. Mr. Gorman, uh, I have a two-part question for you. How do the sizes of the institutions here today compare to some of your largest international competitors? And do you think international competition, as we've talked about and you've, as we've discussed a little bit, will fill the void if you were forced to downsize because you were deemed too big to manage by a future president or Congress? Well, the, the U.S. financial system uh, is, is very interesting because it has at the one time very large financial institutions represented here. Uh, it needs those because it has very large corporations. Uh, somebody has to finance Microsoft and Google and Exxon and IBM and GE etc. And if the U.S. financial institutions aren't doing it, aren't the backbone, somebody else will from overseas. Uh, secondly, it also has 5,000 smaller banks, which most countries don't have. This is actually the least concentrated banking sector, I believe, of any of the major developed markets in the world. I grew up in Australia. The top four banks account for 80 percent of deposits. Thank you. I yield my... The gentleman from Washington, Mr. Heck, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, I'd like to ask a question, first of all, to Mr. Corbett, Diamond, and Moynihan. As the heads of banks, over 10 billion, you're obviously supervised by CFPB for consumer protection. And as you no doubt know, the last director of CFPB, affirmed by the current one, uh, has announced that they are going to stop checking on compliance with the Military Lending Act. Um, they've indicated they're no longer examining for compliance. And I want to confirm here now for the public record that that is the case. Mr. Corbett? I believe we continue to be checked by our regulators to be in compliance, and we are in compliance. So you're saying that notwithstanding what the director of CFPB has said, that they're no longer examining for compliance, they are in fact examining for compliance? Well, I, I, I should state that I believe, and we can follow up directly with it with your office, is that the OCC actually um, checks that, and we have been checked in, uh, to be in compliance. With that wasn't the question, though, sir. It was whether or not CFB was examining you for compliance with the Military Lending Act. Mr. Diamond? I am not actually not aware where they are or aren't, but we're going to continue doing it ourselves anyway. Mr. Moynihan? I'm not aware of the consumer bureaus, but the OCC regulates us on that and does examine it. The CFB does as well. I, or they did follow, they work with the OCC? It, so we're examined on it routinely, and we continue to comply with all laws. Did any of you object to the CFPB examining you for compliance with the Military Lending Act? Did any of you submit in writing, or have any of your 
employees on your behalf indicate to them that you wanted them to stop examining you for compliance with the Military Lending Act, Mr. Corbett? I did not. Not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm, not that I'm aware of you. It's a painful reminder that the night before last, three young Marines lost their life in Afghanistan. And it's on behalf of the young men and women who put on the uniform to defend this nation that that law was passed to protect them. Because as a matter of fact, as a point of fact, 80% of those who lose their security clearances do so because of financial distress. That was part of what led to the enactment of the Military Lending Act in 2006, I believe. The question really is begged as to who is, who is it that looks out for military families. But what I have taken from you is none of you would object to being examined by CFPB for compliance with the Military Lending Act. Raise your hand to the three of you if you would object to that. You would object to that, sir? Too many negatives. No, I wouldn't object yeah. to that. Sorry about that. <clears throat> okay.